Hello, this is Brunswick Coriopolis, the natural log of E. With Alpha News, I'm here standing in front of the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. We're just minutes away from the Supreme Court ruling of Marbury versus Madison. This is my cousin Chadwick Coriopolis. Chadwick, who do you think is going to win this case? I think Marbury is going to win. For those of you just tuning in, Marbury versus Madison is a court case over the Supreme Court exercising judicial review. At the very end of President John Adams' term, William Marbury was appointed to position of Justice of the Peace. However, when Thomas Jefferson took over the Oval Office, he refused to recognize Marbury's position of Justice of the Peace. This caused William Marbury to sue Secretary of State James Madison. Back on February 11th of this year, 1803, the court case was argued in the Supreme Court. Marbury argued that he deserved his appointment under the Ju Judiciary Act of 1789, passed by Congress, so that he should be Justice of the Peace. Madison's rebuttal stated that Marbury never received his official appointment for Justice of the Peace. Chief Justice John Marshall is moments away from the decision. Let's go into the courtroom to see what he has to say. Please rise for Chief Justice John Marshall. Please be seated. The Supreme Court has made its decision. We have found that the Judiciary Act of 1789 is unlawful and unconstitutional. We rule in the favor of William Marbury. Thank you. Please rise. As you just witnessed, Chief Justice John Marshall ruled in the favor of William Marbury. This means Marbury is now Justice of the Peace. The court also ruled that the Judiciary Act of 1789 is unconstitutional. This is the first law to ever be justified as such. This means that the Supreme Court cannot deliver or deny commissions because Article 3 of the Constitution denies them this right. This is Brunswick Coriopolis, live from the Supreme Court building. Back to you in the studio, Brunswick. The results of the presidential election are in. Ike has jumped the hurdle once again. He's victorious! As you can see from the chart, Eisenhower swept most of the states, 41 out of 48. It's even more of an upset for Stevenson this time around than back in 52. Even though the Electoral College votes were 457 to 73 respectfully, Eisenhower only got about 57.5% of the popular vote, with 42% going to Stevenson and around 0.5% to minor parties.